Vaginas are absolute magic. And Ali is here to give them the respect they deserve. That means shame-free supplements made with clinically studied ingredients to keep your pH in check and your pleasure a priority. Put yourself on top. Go to Ollie.com today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This episode is brought to you by Undeniably Dairy. Dairy farmers are more than farmers. They're climate caretakers. They see water as a precious resource. Most farmers recycle water up to four times, from chilling the milk to irrigating the crops. And some even use technology to turn manure into renewable energy. To learn more about what dairy farmers are doing to make their farms more sustainable, visit usdairy.com. A quick note. This episode originally aired on Patreon as part of my parenting podcast. As you are probably aware, potty training does not exist in a vacuum devoid of all parenting. And so some of the lessons really apply. Rather than recreating whole episodes, I thought I would intersperse these parenting episodes into the potty training episodes because I find they're very relevant in the potty training space. And when I work with clients, I often refer them to these podcasts. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey, I'm Jamie Glowacki, and you are listening to Oh Crap, I Love My Toddler, But Holy Fuck. This is a podcast for conscious parents who drop the F-bomb a lot. Hey, hey, you guys. Welcome, welcome. So today, let's talk about praise, praising your child. And I'm going to get a little ranty here. (laughs) So I assure you, I'm not directing anything at you personally. This is just uh, my cup has boiled over with this particular issue and what I'm seeing in parents. And no worries if you're doing any of the things that I get ranty about. I'm going to I'm going to give you advice at the end on how to fix it. (laughs) Bear with me while I get on my soapbox here. Okay, so praise. I want to talk about how praise in particular is leading to horrifically crappy behavior. And I know that sounds so counterintuitive. You're like, all I'm doing is praising my child. How could, what do you mean that's causing the crappy behavior? Well, let's dig into it. Okay. So first of all, I like to always go, you know, when we're talking about a specific word, I like to go back to Webster to get the actual definition because some things get a sort of societal meaning that we we all collectively agree upon and it's not really what it means. So praise defined by Webster, is the expression of approval, commendation, or admiration. There is also a reason for praise equals merit. And of course, there's praise in a religious context, but that doesn't apply here. Praise is not cheerleading, okay? Let's break down praise and positive reinforcement, because that is getting very skewed. And I've talked about this in past podcasts. I talk about it in my book, Oh Crap, I Have a Toddler, and I'm very vocal about it in my potty training work. Positive reinforcement is a buzzword, and people often equate praise with positive reinforcement. They also equate bribes with positive reinforcement and rewards with positive reinforcement. So let's just take a minute, and I've talked about it before, so bear with me if you've heard me, because a lot of people have it. <laughs> and so I like to go through this. So positive reinforcement, it really literally came out of the last generation of parenting, which I would say is me. Again, I like to give my age for context. I'm uh, going to be 52 this year. And when I was growing up, parenting was, you could say, pot, uh, negative reinforcement. So it didn't matter if you've got all A's. If you got one B, your parents were like furious about the B. Didn't even have to be a C or a D. It just had to be less than an A. You did not get praise or reward or an allowance for setting the table. You got yelled at if you didn't do the table right. Okay. Or maybe not yelled at. I mean, maybe not everybody was yelled at. I was. <laughs> but So the idea is that everybody used to, and it was, it was common. It was a common practice. You worked, you pointed out your child's weak link so they could work on it. Right. And you expected a lot of positive things. Like you expected A's because you were paying attention. You were doing your homework. You were doing the work. And that's what you get if you are doing it well. So the expectation was that some normal things you don't praise because that's the expectation. And that's where we get into the potty training, right? Potty training in the early days, yes, of course, you want to to indicate that what the child did 
was what you asked of them. But we also don't want to make it this crazy thing. Like, you know, I, uh, there's one body training book out there that suggests you literally like get balloons and, and make it a, a, a party. And I'm like, fuck, it's putting poop and pee in the toilet. Like it should be just like, hey, you did the thing. Awesome. <laughs> but we'll get into like actual phrases and vocal tone a little later. So what happened in, in at some point, I think it was like the late seventies, eighties, we started to recognize that, you know, maybe just harping on the negative all the time wasn't that great for kids. And I remember because I student taught second grade, that was my first major. And I worked with a teacher and she was the first I'd ever seen of this. She was the first person to, you know, if you had 10 problems on a worksheet and you got one wrong, she wrote that you got nine right. And I remember her being shunned by the other kind of quote unquote old school teachers. Like, ugh, like they just didn't jive with that philosophy at all. And so that was in 1987. So this positive reinforcement is fairly new on the scene. And of course, like all things parenting, well, I just feel like this is human nature, particularly in America is like, Hey, if something's good, let's like swing that pendulum all the way over and like, overdo it. So then we got into this, like, everything's positive reinforcement. Nothing's negative. We don't reprimand our kids for anything. And I don't agree with this. I don't agree with everything gets a gold star. And I don't know if you guys, I, I've said tiger mom to a couple of people, and I feel like this might be a generational thing. Like maybe as parents, you don't even know about tiger mom, but tiger mom was this woman who came out and she She's uh follows a sort of Asian aesthetic to education, which is like super hardcore. And and she's pretty famous. If you Google, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google and pull up lots of things. And like to the point of like refusing birthday cards that her kids made because it was not their best work. So I'm not going to that extent, but like all things, I think the pendulum can swing somewhere in the middle. So what happens is parents often say, I've said this before, I get not just my perspective on parents helping with the family, but I have a ton of oh crap certified experts who we meet once a month on Zoom so I can see, you know, if they're having trouble with clients. And this is across the board coming from other other people who work with kids and families. And it's kind of crazy because we're running into excessive praise, wrong praise, empty praise being a huge issue and parents being kind of clueless as to really kind of the damage it can do. And, you know, I use that term. I don't like that term being used, you know, and I, if you're listening to this, you probably listen to the trauma and how we overuse some of these words, but there's a lot of insidious stuff that's being done covered by praise. And the problem in this is it's not so much that the damage being done, it's that you think you're doing this really great thing and you're really not. Okay. So first and foremost is what we hear from parents is, you know, but I have to let them know. I have to let them know because I want them to, I want them to know I'm proud of them. So this we hear a lot. I want to be very, very clear because this has a lot of hidden meaning to it. I want him to know I'm proud of him. Number one, you have a childhood wound. Go get help with that. You were not praised. You feel the need to get external prize. And I don't say this. There are generally in psychology, there are generally well-known like mother issues. Mother issues can be attachment. That's later in life, you know, like when you're in therapy. Father issues are almost always about pride and accomplishments, you know, getting external validation. And so I would venture to say 99% of the time, if you are doing this with your kid, your dad, somehow you didn't get approval from him. So just go get some help with that because that's your wound. Here's another shocker, you guys. I'm going to be a little bit mean about this. Parenting is not about you. It is about the child. So anytime you need, you, you feel yourself saying, I want him to know about me. No, maybe when he's 25, he'll be interested in you. Probably not. Probably only when he's like writing your your obituary, really, that'll be like, oh, I wonder if my mom, it's just not, it's just not how it goes, you guys. Like when there is, <laughs> I didn't mean to be all macabre there, <laughs> but really it's our job to get out of their way to facilitate. It's not about us. And that is huge because that's really going on a lot in today's parenting, making it about you. That's why the older generation thinks we're all freaking high because of all this parenting stuff. They're like, stop making it so hard because our parents didn't actually make it about us as neglectful as they could have been, they didn't make it about us. And that's where you get into all kinds of weird trouble. The other thing about this is that pride. Let's, let's talk about pride, you guys. If you want your child to be proud, 
pride comes from within. Pride usually comes from doing something that was hard or that you didn't think you could do. Okay. So think back, take a second, think of the times you have been so proud of yourself, right? It's this like, oh my God, I did it. I did that thing. And here's the trip. So I, I just, a, a memory pulled up on Facebook and two years ago, I nailed a Spartan beast and it was at Mount Killington. It was 17 miles up and down Mount Killington, which is a double black diamond ski mountain in Vermont. And one of the hardest obstacles is a spear throw. So you throw a spear and you try to nail it. And historically women do terrible at it. It is the most failed obstacle. I was a dog with a bone in the training. I bought a spear, I bought a bale of hay and I was like, I'm going to nail the spear throw. So, and it's at the end, you're exhausted. And I do the spear throw and I get, I nail it. I nailed the spear throw. Oh my God. My heart was going to burst open. I was so freaking proud of myself. And I turned around and everybody was like, oh my God, that was amazing. High fives all around. Here's the trick. None of it lived up to the pride that I had within. Nobody's words gave me anything. In fact, it their words fell flat. I was like, that doesn't even describe it. Like awesome. Amazing. Good job. You did. Like it just fell flat. What was so important was that feeling I had inside. And so that's where pride comes from. So very often trying to give your child external pride is not going to pan out the way you want. Number one, you build a very fragile inner life. So if you are over praising, and we'll be talking about like in a minute, I'm going to talk about like what, how these things sound. So you can tell if you're doing it right. Over praising builds too fragile an inner life. So if you're, if you're praising for every fucking thing your kid does, you are not building pride and self esteem. You are literally weakening it. Okay. You're creating potentially a nervous learner. You are potentially creating a perfectionistic learner. Okay. And this, this is true. I saw this in my own family. My stepbrother was just considered a God by his mother. And this is my stepdad's son. He got praised for breathing. He got praised for walking across the floor. He got praised for everything. Well, the thing about it is he became a perfectionistic learner. He was unwilling to take risks. He was so addicted to that praise for nothing that he would not step out of a comfort zone. So he went and did very, very safe, secure things, never wanted to make a mistake, right? Because as you praise, there is a little dopamine hit, you know? But the kid also knows, here's the other danger. The kid knows that they didn't do anything right? They know it. And try an example. So, you know, when your kid does, ma, 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 watch me, watch me. And then they do some stupid ass shit, like jump like an inch off the floor, like not even impressive. They didn't jump on the sofa. They didn't do anything cool. And so many parents, especially distracted parents will say, oh, that was so good. No, that was not so good. They did something they know how to do. Don't praise that, right? The problem is, is when you say, oh, good job, your kid knows you just lowered the bar. They know they didn't take a risk. They know that jumping off the floor, that's in fact, it's such a developmental stage. It's like, praise me, praise me, praise me for everything. That's not praise. You don't want to praise that kind of behavior. If you say to me, Jamie, oh my God, you ran three miles. That is amazing. I know you're full of shit because you know what? I run eight miles every day. So I know you're being insincere. I know that it's empty because that's not what I'm capable of doing. So make sure that you don't praise for everything. Yeah. And it's not like, again, you don't have to be like super tiger mom and refuse your kid's birthday card because you think it's not their best work, but there is some leeway here and the pendulum can swing in the middle. So number one, we're going to kind of go through the don'ts, yeah? So here's what you don't want to do with praise. Do not make it cloying and high pitch. The minute you start to talk like this, you have negated all the praise. It means nothing because I can tell, and your kids know it too. Believe me when I tell you, you guys know what I'm talking about. You've been at the park and somebody says, good job going down the slide. The slide is fucking gravity, you guys. There's no good job in going down the slide. And we'll get to what it might be in a minute, okay? So don't, 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 don't. Don't make it high-pitched. Don't make it cloying. In fact, 
What's really cool is a low vocal quality. Yeah. And oftentimes when I'm working with families, dads to their sons, this is particularly effective. Low tone, fist bump. Hey, I saw what you did. Hey, awesome. Yeah, that's it. That's it, right? One word, look them in the eye so they know it's sincere. Holy crap. Pascal Wenier had this guy for a coach. He had this booming bass voice. Like, you know, that voice that almost doesn't register. It's so low. And this guy used his word so sparingly. When this guy told you, you did a good job. Holy shit. You, I I shivered. Like I was so proud of my kid when this coach said something to him because he didn't overdo it. So it was so sincere when he did it. The other big thing, Okay, so let's take the slide example. Don't make it about the wrong thing, right? So don't praise the result because that's how you get the nervous learner, the perfectionistic learner, the kid who's not going to take a risk. Don't praise the result. Praise the work that went into it. And there's so much research on this. So don't say, good job, you went down the slide. If you have a YOLO kid who just goes down the slide every day, you do not even give that praise at all. But if you have a kid who's been working on it, is super nervous, super afraid, and they finally fly down the slide, okay? Don't say, good job for going down the slide. That's not the thing you want to praise. The thing you want to praise is they got over the fear. So when they get down, you get to them, you get low vocal tone, you look them in the eye and you say, wow, you worked hard to do that. I, I see that. Okay. So praise also gets confused with validation. People go, Oh, I want to validate them for doing a good job. No, they didn't necessarily do a good job. They did work through something in a lot of cases, right? So that's the thing you want to validate. Validation means to be seen. When you validate only the outcome, when you validate, Oh, good job. You went down the slide. What happens? is that you haven't validated the thing, which is, wow, I saw you work really hard. I know in the past that's made you very nervous. So you work through that and that's really cool. It's a huge difference, right? And what about like, I don't know, I take them into adult examples too. Like you don't go to somebody's house and you don't, you don't go like, oh my God, you made the best dinner in the whole world. I can't even believe how proud I am of you for making a dinner. You don't do that. We don't praise our adult friends for like, we don't praise them in that cloying, emptying manner. Now you may say, wow, that was delicious. And I, I think you probably made a culinary leap there, man, your work really shows. You would say something sincere like that. So make sure you're being sincere. Next pitfall with praise that I see parents always do. Do not attach your emotions to your child's behavior. So the praise that does this sounds like this. Oh, you make mommy so happy when you poop in the toilet. Oh, you make mommy so happy when you are quiet at the grocery store. Number one, you guys, this is really psychologically horrible. So what you've just done is you've laid it at your child's feet that they are responsible for your emotional state. So if you find yourself saying, you make me so happy, you make me so sad, I'm going to say that and I'll isolate quote unquote damage to that. Do not make your child responsible for your emotional state. Yeah. You can occasionally say this behavior infuriates me. This behavior makes me proud of you or something like that. But do not attach happy and sad to your child. Think of how fucked up that is like later in life, right? Ah, I got to make my mom happy. I got to make, what if I make my mom sad? No, 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 no. Free your child up, please. The other thing is that in most cases, especially for the like under 10 crowd, doing that hands your child a loaded emotional gun. It says, here, here's a tool you can use to manipulate me when you're feeling like you want to be shitty, (laughs) right? So if your kid is feeling mad at you, and wants you to feel sad, and they have so little control in their life, they are. They're going to do the thing that you just told them makes makes you sad. So don't do that. Just don't put it on your kid. It, It really isn't. It's not good for them. So 
The next thing that you don't want to do is, again, I keep saying the word empty, empty, empty. Are you overpraising for nothing? I just went on a hike up a mountain with a friend of mine, a lovely woman who I just, I love this woman to death. And I have never really spent time with her 11-year-old son. And this kid is a great kid, but he was a pain in the ass and he did not want to be on this mountain. And every 200 yards, he was complaining. And so her strategy was like, good job. You're doing such a good job. So finally I like went up, (laughs) I went up with her a, a quarter of a mile and I was like, stop saying good job. He's not doing a good job. He's being a little shit. Do not praise him for that. Like you're setting the bar so low. The kid is walking up a mountain, like legit. And, and the kid's in pretty good shape. So it's not like, you know, this kid was stepping out of a comfort zone here. So it it becomes empty, you guys. And like I said before, the kid knows it, right? So how do you know if something's praiseworthy? It really should be something that makes you go, wow. You know, like, I don't know. They kind of always do like when they do a flip off the couch and they land it and you're like, wow, that was kind of (laughs) cool. You know, you want to praise the thing. You want to, again, I said this before, right? You don't want to praise the, the, the result. You want to praise the thing that they worked on. So if they do a flip off the couch, you go, wow, you know what? I saw you practice that a lot and you landed on your head and that made me nervous. But this, you landed on your feet. You worked really hard and you know what? Cool. Cause <laughs> I'm not so nervous about your head now. I use the jar of goods. So, you know, I've been pretty, uh, I put it on Instagram and I have it somewhere here on Patreon that I have this jar of good. We keep it on our fridge. It is not my idea. I don't even know how I got the idea, but it it definitely wasn't mine. (laughs) But what you do is you find things. It's a yearly thing. We happen to open ours on New Year's Day. It's our tradition. And throughout the year, what I do is when I catch Pascal doing something interesting, being an advocate for another kid, being an advocate for himself, something that I'm particularly proud of, I write it down in the jar of good. And I, you know, we, he reads them all at New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day. And it's a really cool thing. It's definitely a cool thing to do throughout the years. And it's very interesting. I just found years past, I have saved them throughout the years. I didn't even know I had saved them. And so it's kind of a cool little diary. It's also really amazing to figure out like the stuff you do throughout the year, like you forget It's been really challenging during quarantine because we haven't really done anything. And so I said to him, I was like, wow, there's going to be four months where there's no jar of good. And he was like, why? And I was like, dude, what was I going to praise you for? Like watching 10 episodes of Friends, like for staying on extra late with your friends on video games. Like there was nothing praiseworthy that happened during the pandemic because we didn't do anything. We didn't have a lot of interactions with people. You didn't have to ever stand up for yourself. You didn't ever have to do anything kind of out of your comfort zone. And he was like, oh yeah, good point. And so that led me though to the, down this path of like, yeah, it has to be jar of good worthy. It has to be worthy of me noticing so that I'll write it down, put it in the jar and he can reflect on it. Imagine if the jar of good was filled with Hey, you woke up in a good mood. I'm so proud of you. Good job. Good job. Good job. (laughs) So that is my litmus test, right? So these are the things that you have to be careful with, with praise. And I think it comes down to this. And I've talked about this with the phrase, good job. So funny. I, um, I actually, Last night, Pascal and I watched this movie called Whiplash. Very good about a a high-end music school and the uh, a teacher who's totally abusive and like actually like messes with the kid's mind to get huge good performances out of this drummer. It was pretty hard to watch. Pascal's a drummer and that kind of abusive teaching is really hard to watch. But he does, he says this one thing, the abusive teacher, he's like, the two worst words in the English language are good job. And I was like, yes, that's what I tell my, you know, the parents I work with all the time. Good job is so meaningless. It's too ubiquitous. It's everywhere. You can hear it on the playground. Like just tune in, you guys, to even in the market, even still in pandemic kind of conditions, you know, where we're not swamped with other parents, like good job. And it's always said in that tone, good job. It's distracted parenting. A lot of the times you're on your phone, your kid does some something stupid and you're like, oh, good job. Oh, good job. Good job. It's meaningless. So take that out of your parenting vocabulary. 
find other words, find that sincerity, right? Find the thing that you really want to be proud of. I think that's the key, right? Is finding the thing, even pooping in the potty. You know, if your kid struggled, like you could fist bump your kid. If it goes really well, they poop in the potty and you're like, right on, man, you did the right thing. That's cool. Or it could be, you know, that you really struggled with poop in the potty, which is, you know, a lot of, a lot of the work I, I do with the potty training clients that I get is, you know, kids who have massive struggle with poop. And then the parents go like freaking overboard on the praise. And I'm like, this is socialized behavior. We don't want to go overboard with the praise. We don't want them to get nervous that they have to do it right every time. We don't want to create a perfectionistic learner in this situation, but we do want to acknowledge. We want to validate what? That they were having a hard time and they did the hard thing. That's almost always what this comes down to, right? You struggled in some way, shape or form and you did the right thing or you worked really hard and you did the right thing. And again, this isn't just m- me and my theory. This is super well documented in schools. You know, they want you to we always want to tell kids that we see you. We see your struggle. We see the work you put into it. And we also don't want to acknowledge when you didn't, when you do half-ass things, it's okay to let your kid know that they did a half-ass thing or to not acknowledge it. You don't have to acknowledge everything. You don't have to acknowledge every breath. And that's how I always talk about it in terms of potty training too, is I go, you know, like, hey, did you give an an M&M for sleeping through the night? No, then don't give them an M&M to pee on the potty because like, that's crazy. It's making it something out of the ordinary, right? So that is my (laughs) rant on praise. Just sincere, low tones, stop with the effusive praise. They don't need it. Cut your language, cut it at least by three quarters. Yeah. And, And find the thing, find the thing that you're actually proud of, not the result. All right, you guys, as always, I am so super thankful for you. I'm grateful for the support. I'm grateful for the questions you guys ask me on Patreon. I love having a community where we're creating the content together and not just me being just like, hey, I have an idea. (laughs) As always, you guys rock on. All right, I'm going to sign off for today. You can always go to jamieglowacki.com for the super cool latest updates, including the launch of my new book, yummy new book presale treats, when we release new episodes, and how to work with me directly. And of course, if you need any potty training help, there's a handy link there that will take you to all my potty training resources, including all my courses. That's the Oh Crap Potty Training online course, my pooping solutions course, and my night training supplement. And if you need additional help, how to book with a certified OCRAP consultant. That's all at jamieglowacki.com. Have a beautiful day and rock on.